Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field your North Haven football team. Look up to the center of the field. For Shelton, number two, Ryan Tennant. Number 13, Carlos Ostrowski. 53, Jake Burroughs. And number 64, Christopher Moise. For North Haven, number 10, Mike Moran. Number 59, Joey Carbone. Number three, Joey Mastriani. And number 24, Tyler Camaro. North Haven has won the toss, and they will defer to the second half. has been tossed and we're ready for Thanksgiving football here on North Haven Television. My name is Michael Valenti alongside Trevor Keyes. Not the ideal situation for North Haven on this Thanksgiving morning. Oh, for anybody. For anybody. <laughs> it is cold. It is wet. And unfortunately, the playoff chances are not in North Haven's favor. It's still mathematically in contention, but mm -hmm. they need a lot of help. Not just winning today, but they need several teams to lose in front of them to hop in on that eighth spot for the, the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And even if they get that eighth spot, they're going to have to face an undefeated Daniel Hand team in the first round. That's a good Daniel Hand team. So, Trevor, going into this game, knowing the implications of it's, it's going to be a long shot, do you go into this game with the, with the hope that you're making the playoffs, or do you take – what's given and just be like let's just play our game well first off i want to say happy thanksgiving to happy my, thanksgiving to you too my man over here michael valente and the rest of north haven fans that are watching and shelton fans on youtube happy thanksgiving to all but honestly just go out and do your job you got you can't look at scoreboard you got to take care of what you're assigned to do in this game and for north haven they're going to go on defense and see if they can set the tone in this sloppy type of weather day Michael Spadaccino gets the return and has open space, crossing the 40 midfield, and he's going to break it to the house on the opening kickoff for a touchdown, and the Shelton Gales are up 6-0 on the opening kickoff. Well, we've seen throughout this year, Michael, that North Haven has had some struggles in the return or the kickoff team. Well, we've seen a couple of returns against them, and Shelton coming into this game, a big underdog, 2-7, a couple wins straight, where you think in the beginning of this year, Shelton-North Haven would be a heck of a game. But Shelton's had a down year rebuilding year, but wow, 
Talk about setting the tone, Michael. Yeah, a I mean, fast, fast start here on Thanksgiving for the Shelton Gales. Yes, definitely. And the Shelton Gales coming into this game on a two-game winning streak. Uh, yeah. Starting the season 0-7, but won the last two. And North Haven, after a week off, they had a really tough time here uh, with a very tough loss against Fairfield Prep, where they were marching down, had the lead several times, and just could not clinch that win. And now are trailing here 6 nothing with the extra point coming. Going through, and that's good. So right out of the wow. gate, wow. North Haven won the toss, deferred, and don't even touch the ball yet. They're already trailing 7 I mean, nothing. we got a lot of action already early on. 14 seconds into this game. I mean, it's raining. This is, I know we don't like this weather, but this is typical Thanksgiving weather. Rain, sloppy weather, cold. And Shelton comes out hot. A big return. This is one of their top players, Michael Spadaccino, one of their top receivers. So you saw the speed. I was going to say the conditions on this field, who's going to be able to handle the elements of this weather, but Shelton, wow. Let's see how North Haven bounces back. They've had some opportunities going on, on the return game this year, so they've had their own success, but how do they bounce back after the quick answer from Shelton? Very impressive start to this Shelton game plan moving forward. Andre Zanna will kick off for Shelton. Fielded by Artie McCormick. Artie McCormick with the return. And this is the big deal. Now we're waiting for my guy, Michael Valenti. He's doing it all over here in the press box. You got to see him. He's a one-man wrecking crew, but he is back now. <laughs> he is back. But, yeah, Artie McCormick now, the focal point of this offense. Him and Joey Mastriani, fun little stat. So when Mastriani goes for 80-plus, they are 4-1 and one this year. Under, 1-3. and three. So let's see how they get him involved in this game plan. Both had nice games against prep a couple weeks ago. Combining for 235 yards and three touchdowns. So let's see how this duo does in the backfield for the Nighthawks. So Mastriani on first down gets the carry. Goes past the 40. Keeps getting pushed by his offensive lineman. Crossing the 45. Nice job there for about a gain of eight on the play. And that's what they're going to have to do today. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be... A barn burner. It's going to be a slobber knocker. This is the type of game that you're going to see maybe those low scores. 10-7, time of possession, long possessions, I should say, for both teams with this weather. So right there, North Haven starts off good with a nice eight-yard run. Second down and two. DeMauro gets the carry trying to get the first down. He's going to be stopped maybe. Like a little short. We'll see where it's marked. It's close to the first down marker for Tyler DeMauro. And you're going to see the footing is going to come into play today. Anytime you have this type of weather, you really got to try to find your footing. And then you see right there, didn't seem to get it and really never had a start to get that run going. He got the first down, so yeah, the chains down. move first and 10 as the clock continues to run here. Mastriani again up the middle, getting to midfield. So a gain of two on the play. So it looks like what we're seeing here might be the, I mean, we see this all the time with North Haven where they just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. But with the, but in with this the conditions, game, but in this game. <laughs> we'll see if they throw it all today. <laughs> well, if you're getting, I mean, Michael, if you're getting four to five yards of pop, don't really need to throw the ball. No, not really. Not but really. If Shellen has no answer for this rushing attack, then keep doing something that's working. Don't change it. Second and eight on this senior day Thanksgiving game for North Haven. The freshman comes in, Artie McCormick. McCormick on the carry. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up a yard. Looks Cross like midfield, so a yard there for uh, Tyler DeMauro, the senior. Third and seven, so... Somewhat manageable, but in the running game, it's kind of going to be tough to get these seven yards. And the Gales are doing a pretty decent job containing the running game so far after the Mastriani eight-yard gain on first down. And that's going to be the key for Shellen is the penetration of the defensive line. If they can get in the backfield and really – because North Haven, once they get going with that rushing attack, it's, it's going to be a long day for anybody. So Shellen has to do their best to penetrate that backfield and get in there and make problems for this North Haven rushing attack. Mastriani picks up. Three, and they'll be punting here on fourth down. 
just at nine minutes ago in this first quarter. 7 nothing Shelton on the opening kickoff from Ma uh, Michael Spadicino, who is back deep to receive the punt. Got untouched on that kickoff return, too. Obviously, he's a dangerous return man. Punt nearly blocked. Spadicino returns it, slips. Spadicino on the return. Gets around the edge and pushed out of bounds, out of bounds at around the 27-yard line. So Shelton starts off here, and they have a little bit of a balance attack here, but we'll see how much running they or how much passing they do today in the elements, led by their quarterback Logan Spalaski. Sepkaski, excuse me, Logan Sepkaski. And they're in shotgun formation. Yeah, they have a nice balance. I mean, they're averaging 150 on the ground, 157 through the air. So this is a balanced attack. And I'm very surprised because they got some weapons. And you already seen Spadicino make his impact in this game early on. So let's see if the rest of this offense of the Gales can get it going for them. Handoff is to Devin Reed. And gains one on the play on the left side. Game on first down. Second and nine for the Gales. So they're going to be rotating a, quite a few running backs here. They have uh, Cole St. Pierre, Ryan Kinnick, and Reed, uh, Devin Reed, who got the first carry. And coming in right now is, I believe that's Kinnick. Shotgun formation. Sepkaski rolls out. Rolls back to open space. He's going to take it upon himself. And we know that he can use that running too and gains about seven on the play. Yeah, don't be fooled by it. He's a 6'3 quarterback tall coming into this game 53%. Completion percentage, I should say, on the season, but he can move. So those defensive ends are going to have to be under control and in contain. If there's one thing you want, especially in this game, the footing is going to be tough. I can't emphasize it enough. It's going to be tough. So you got to stay at home and watch the big man in the backfield. Shotgun formation on this third and one. Three wide receivers on the near side. Except Kasky takes it upon himself. Takes off one tackler, but he's going to be stopped by Tyler DeMauro and pushed into the Shelton sidelines there. Oh, we like to see it. And losing about game. five yards on the play, if not more. Well, I think that forward progress will have him about a yard short. So maybe Shelton goes for it. In this case, you don't have really anything to play for. So just go. It's the last game of the year. Fourth and one. Coming into territory, road territory for them. And I go for it in this situation. But I think I always say that for everything. Yeah, you're, uh, you're very aggressive. I'm very aggressive when it comes to going for it. Why not? Shel it's 4-1. to one. In a situation like this where you're the underdog, you're on the road, you want to have a statement, and well, they already started off hot, might as well continue and have North Haven up against the ropes and possibly try to play into their style where they're running the football, keeping them off the field, and playing the long game. They decide to punt here on fourth down unless they go for the fake. Match right back deep. It's a bad snap. It stays on the ground, and he misses the punt. Ball is still on the ground, and it's going to be recovered by North Haven. And I'm just looking at some of the fans. They're like laughing because it's like, look at that. that nobody wanted to pick up that football right there, but that's what the weather conditions are going to be. It's going to be very sloppy. It's going to be hard to hold on to the football. So I hope these coaches, both of these coaching staffs, really got these guys prepared this week for the precipitation in this weather because it's going to have a great impact. Impact, and as it is, it has a bad impact for the Gales. I now, believe it was Johnny Williston that picked up that fumble. If it's called a fumble, I don't know. No, that was, a, that was a bad snap slash fumble. Yeah, it was. So Mastriani hands it off to Chris Cretel, and He's tackled behind the line of scrimmage there. What a play by number 55, James uh, Zaccazzini. James Zaccazzini with the tackle. Of the yards of the play. Uh, excuse me, Gratello loses one on the play. So second and 11 after the nice play by the Gales defense on a follow-up on a very messy punting situation. I think the elements definitely played a role on that one. Oh, they will for the rest of this game. McCormick getting around the edge but slides into the 25-yard one and he fumbled. And a Gale say they have it. Nope. Now they're saying down by contact, so McCormick gets the yard back lost on first down, so it'll be third and ten. This way, yeah, this weather is having a huge impact early in in this first quarter. 
Look at the whole team. The whole team is in the t- under the tent right now. Hiding oh, whatever from- <laughs> players can fit. <laughs> yeah, I got the, the whole team under the tent right now. Mastriani mishandles the snap, and he's going to be hit from behind on a huge hit there by Jack Fargo. And you are really, really seeing this weather come into factor with plays for both North Haven and Shelton. And these running backs, these receivers, these special teams guys, they're having a hard time with the footing and holding on to the football. So, like I said, I hope they really put an emphasis on trying to these ball carriers, holding on to the football, throwing water at them or something, getting that ball wet where you know they're going to have to be prepared for this. So, on fourth and 18 from the 32 yard line, North Haven is going to go for it here. Nope, they're backing it up for a punt. And there's the punt going over Spadaccini, who lets it roll into the end zone for a touchback. So with 4.22 to go, Shelton leads this one 7 nothing. You're watching Thanksgiving football on NHTV. The Rotary Club of North Haven, where the business community comes together. For personal growth and leadership development, Rotary makes one a better community citizen. For more information, please visit nhrotary.org today. Arnold's Jewelers, the North Haven Diamond Center, 117 Washington Avenue in North Haven. Decades of experience and a deep commitment to the North Haven community. Visit us today at thearnoldsjewelers.net. Coming out of the break, it was Devin Reed with a carry of 12 yards for the first down. And running right through this North Haven defense. Yeah, it looks like, looks like Shellens is actually dealing with the weather a lot better than North Haven has early on in this game. So they've been able to move the ball on this North, ha- North Haven defense. They go with the wide receiver sweep, getting around the edge and pushed outside there. That was number 13, Cole Ostrowski. Cole Ostrowski. On the carry, pushed out of bounds by Beckett Fuller. Second down and eight. Ostrowski getting him pushed out of bounds. Or Fuller, excuse me. 13 pushing out 13. Two yard carry. Second and eight from the 34 yard line. Reed gets the carry again. Doesn't get much, but still forward progress and positive yardage for this Shelton Gales offense. And that's how I fully expect this game to be, Mike Brewer. There's going to be, you're going to see a lot of running the football, and this clock's going to go down very fast just because I don't see a lot of passes. Maybe you will see one or two by Shellen, but with this weather conditions, I do not see how these ball carriers are going to be able to throw the football. Or quarterbacks, I should say. Except Kasky trying a hard count for the uh, offsides. And it's a pass to Ostrowski. And he's pushed out of bounds past the 40-yard line, close to the first down marker, but still short. Yeah, if we're going to sit, like I just was saying before, if we're going to see pass plays, you might see pass plays like that, little bubble screens, quick screens, just to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands. But even when you're seeing this, Lukaski, when he's making the throws, they're coming out very tough, and that's how it's going to be for the remainder of this game because this weather is not slowing up. As Bill Murray once said, I don't think the heavy stuff's coming until later. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong sport, Trevor. I know, I know. <laughs> hey, the way the weather's the same. The it weather is. is the same. It is. <laughs> Fourth and one. Sepkaski takes it upon himself, gets the first down, and Demaro will tackle him down, but well after he makes the first down. Yeah, Sepkowski, Sepkowski's doing a heck of a job right now of having a great impact in this game. So, I mean, I haven't really seen him throw the ball. He's been able to throw the ball this year. Eight touchdowns, one pick coming to this game. So he could throw the ball, but we're seeing it with his legs today, Michael. Yes, we are. And with two minutes to go, Shelton with a 7 nothing lead. And if you missed it, it was on the opening kickoff yeah. where Spadaccino had a pretty much 98-yard kickoff return as Reed finds open space. Plows through a couple Nighthawks and finally brought down at the 46-yard line, a gain of five. Mind you, when it untouched touchdown, 
Yeah, I, he was I, untouched. He, nobody even came close. But this game is uh, as the typical field that I had, that I anticipated coming into this game is where it's going to be a, a pretty much like I said, a slobber knock. It's going to be running the football, a lot of running the football. Who can win inside the trenches? Right now, Shelton has got that advantage. Final 90 seconds in this first quarter. Second and five. The Gales taking their precious time getting the ball snapped. I think this kind of helps them, you know, keep this defense on there as much as possible. I mean, it's cold. There's yeah. not really anywhere to stay warm, but it definitely helps them. Reed again to the outside, crossing the 45 and down at the 43-yard line. So a game of about three or four on the play. I know. It's like watching a slip and slide. Everybody's just slipping all over the place. This weather is, wow, having a, a major impact in this game. But Shelton's doing a heck of a job. I mean, they're running the football, and they're continuing to chew that clock, Michael. Like I said, we're already going down into the first quarter, about to head into the second, and it feels like North Haven hasn't even been able to have the ball yet, but that's the that's the credit to the Shelton offensive line. They've been able to move and win inside the trenches against North Haven. Or in past years, you've seen the North Haven Nighthawks defensive line usually win the battles, but today it's been... Anything but right now. Sepkaski moves the chains over into the final minute of this first quarter. And not exactly what people were probably thinking getting into this game, but really seeing why the Gales are on a two-game winning streak, closing it out despite going 0-7 to start the season. They're playing like a 7-0 and team well, as, right now. Yeah, I mean, they're playing great. But this, for like the juniors, upcoming seniors and upcoming juniors, this is going to be the first game of next season for you. So you'd like for both teams to have a great advantage or jump start into next year, moving forward into the next season. So, and Shelton's doing a heck of a job, really. I mean, great another run by this rushing attack. We haven't seen it. I think we've only seen one or two throws in this game. And Shelton's got complete control in this first quarter, Michael. Another first down, this time by Shelton's leading rusher, Cole St. Pierre, who got 12 yards. And they're gonna let the clock run out to end this first quarter. And not the way the Nighthawks envisioned their senior day to go here on Thanksgiving. Shelton leading this one 7 0. You're watching Thanksgiving football on NHTV. North Haven Funeral Home. 36 Washington Avenue, North Haven. Since 1953, the one source families rely on for caring, compassionate service. North Haven Funeral Home. The Rotary Club of North Haven, where the business community comes together. For personal growth and leadership development, Rotary makes one a better community citizen. For more information, please visit nhrotary.org today. Starting the second quarter, North Haven trailing 7-0 to the Gales. And all started with an opening kickoff. North Haven deferred the kickoff to Shelton, and they answered back with a kickoff return for a touchdown. And Shelton really moving the ball great here, Trevor, to start this game. And you know, had four different rushers, in, or three different rushers in this game right now. The ultimate definition of running back by committee. And they've got complete hold of this game right now. And they're having their way right now with this North Haven defense. Saint Cole St. Pierre gets to the right side, gets to the second level, pushed out, keeps his feet in bounds. And is he in? Are they going to call him down? <laughs> Let's see where he's marked. He might have got... To the 12-yard line. So a gain of 15 for Shelton's leading rusher, who just got his second touch of the game here in the second quarter. And really, Devin Reed has led the way for Shelton so far with 23 yards. But on the last two runs, Cole St. Pierre now took it, the lead with 27 rushing yards for Shelton here. Fresh legs. Fresh yeah. legs. The running back by committee is working right now. They don't need to have to rely on what their main – Workhorse back there. You got running back by committee. So you get one guy come in, have a nice 10 yard run. You see St. Pierre do his thing, and then boom, we'll get in somebody else. Bam, we'll get in another one. It's just, it is a good thing to have if you're Shelton right now, have fresh legs coming in each and every play. St. Pierre goes for one yard before he's taken out for Devin Reed. And North Haven commits the penalty there, jumping off sides. 
play on the play. That was, I think, Evan DeMauro jumped off sides. So that's going to be five-yard penalty. Off sides on North Haven. And where North Haven's been struggling in the defensive line and giving up big chunk plays, big run chunk plays, now it makes so it more manageable for Shelton to maybe go up two scores on the Nighthawks. Back to pass. The throw to the right side is complete to Strzokski for the touchdown. For a Shelton touchdown. 12-yard touchdown pass from Sepkaski to Orlowski for the touchdown. Ostrowski for the touchdown. Very slow developed play by Shelton, but with these conditions, everything has to be very, very slow. And just an easy throw to the receiver. And Shelton, right now, shockingly, is up 14-0. I would say surprisingly. Did not expect to see a game like this because Shelton coming in, two-game winning streak. Maybe they're getting hot at the right time and going into next year, but a heck of a start for the Gales, Michael. Yeah, it is. Not what I was expecting in this game so far. The extra point is blocked. So North Haven finally gets something going there. Sometimes and Hopefully need, this turns around. Exactly. Sometimes you need a little, a little play like that. People think, oh, that's not a big deal. That is a big deal. Something like that can slowly turn the tides for a team. And right there, maybe it is. But Shellen, very impressive so far in this early game right now where they're running the football. They're doing what North Haven's doing. They're controlling the line of scrimmage. They're going down the field. And now we have a 13-0 lead. So North Haven... In a situation where they do not want to be, we're down two scores. How do they handle this early adversity? That is a question to be determined soon. Yeah. A big drive. I mean, this is a big drive right here. It is. <laughs> Usually we see this on the other side where North Haven has the lead and the other team has that big drive early yeah. on to see if, you know, they answer back. Mm -hmm. North Haven's on the other side of the coin today. This is possibly a, huge a make or break drive just a minute into the second quarter. Mm -hmm. Chris Cottage, the lone deep man. For Chris North Cottage North. is the lone deep man for North Haven on the kickoff. And it's a decent kick. Will be returned Cottage will get the ball. by Cottage. And he dives and lands at the 26 yard line. So North Haven, not known for their passing attack. And with the elements, we'll see if Joe Mastriani does throw. He does throw more this year than we have seen in years past with this single wing offense. Yeah. But in this, this rainy weather. It's windy, it's rainy. It's like the worst type of weather you can possibly have, especially if you're a quarterback. you got to deal with this. First and 10 from the 26. Mastriani. Mastriani stopped maybe for a yard if anything and Shellen has come in and has been the total aggressor in this game they're just beating up North Haven early on so let's see how North Haven responds right now being down 13 nothing in a situation they probably don't think there would have been in but this is how it is Clock continues to run here, second and 10. And the handoff goes to Critella, trying to get around to the edge on the misdirection. And the Gales read it loud and clear, and no gain on the play. Yeah, they've been really doing a heck of a job of scoping out each runner and play. And North Haven really has not had any movement of the football in this game right now and that's a credit to the Shelton defense right now. They are dominating on both sides of the trenches, offensive line and D-line and right now that's why the scoreboard says 13-0. Third and nine from the 27. They did end up getting one yard on that play from Cretella. Hand off again. This time go to the outside. That's Artie McCormick coming from the wing. And he gets to the 35 before it pushed out of bounds. Close to the first down marker, depending on where he's marked. He might be a yard short. And that's going to be a North Haven. A huge play. That's a huge, huge play for North Haven right there. Third and long in a situation they don't want to be in. But giving it to their their workhorse back in McCormick. And he's finding a way to get it. So let's see if North Haven can slowly get back to what they do best. So the first attempt from the 37 yard line. And it's a run up the middle. 
Still on his feet, still on his feet. And finally brought down at the 44-yard line. Mastriani gets seven on the play. And that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to be the aggressive team. They're going to have to play smash, more, smash mouth football because with these conditions, this is how this game is going to be played out. No other way around it. It's smash mouth football, and you're going to have to be the better man. And right now, Shelton, well, has the upper hand, but still a long game to go. But North Haven's starting to gain a little more confidence in that rushing attack. Another run here. McCormick is stopped for a gain of one on the play. And just looking at the team totals right here, North Haven's being outrun right now 49 to 15. And only 49 yards? 49. It feels like, it feels like Shellen it has more. Just because, It seems like that. I only say that because of the way they just have been moving the ball down the entire field past couple drives and have had great success early on in this game. So right now, Shellen is playing the North Haven game. Uh, third and four. Mastriani fakes the handoff and he is going to be stopped again for no gain. Mastriani with seven carries already in this game. Only 12 yards total. That's a, that's a great job for the Gales defense right there. Shutting down a premier focal point of this offense and they've done a heck of a job so far so credit to them so north haven brings out the punting unit with just over just under eight minutes to go here in the half trailing 13 nothing and did not do anything after that blocked extra point Kevin DeMauro on the punt. DeMauro back to punt spatticino back to receive Snap is good. Decent punt. Spadicino will take it. Gets to the 40 and then tackled there by Tyler DeMauro and Brandon Stevens at the 41-yard line. So, yeah, this becomes a huge, huge drive. We've seen Shelton move the ball offensively, move the ball in the return game. And they've been – Michael, let's be honest. They've dominated on all facets of the game early on in this first half with the special teams touched on the first play of the game. Running the ball down the field, controlling the clock, controlling the line of scrimmage, and then defensively really making a heck of an effort to get back that penetration. The defensive line is really causing problems for North Haven. Devin Reed stiff arms one tackler, but then is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Staying on that play is Brian Moran. What a great play there for him, on the captain on his senior day. Yeah, and that's another thing, the seniors. This is this is the last game, possibly, of your high school career, or maybe even football career. So how do you want to be remembered and go out on Thanksgiving? Second and 10 after the stop by Moran. Shotgun formation for Shelton. Three wide receivers on the near side. Quick pass is incomplete out of the hands of Ostrowski. Almost intercepted though, Michael. It looked like a bad throw out of the arm of Skoski. And we've been seeing his throws, very short, quick throws right there. And with the weather, you're not gonna be seeing a lot of long, deep throws by Skoski tonight. But North Haven almost had a pick right there. They almost need, with the way this game's been going, almost need to have that type of play, that turnover right there where they could get the short field and get back into what North Haven does. 6.31 to go here in the second quarter. Third and 10. Shelton up 13-0. Man in motion. Sepkaski rolls out, looks to throw this one. He throws it up the middle, incomplete. Incomplete, broken up by Chris Cottage. Cottage breaks that one up. And, Cottage, and it'll be fourth down. And Cottage did a heck of a job of coming up and jumping the route right there. Almost had a pick, possibly. But a much, much needed play by the defense right there. Where you've seen some struggles throughout the year from the secondary, but a nice play right there. So let's see if North Haven, depending on their turn, could get maybe a decent field position right there and see if they could climb or cut into this 13 nothing lead right now, Michael. Jake Ferreira back to punt. Gets a good snap this time. Nearly blocked, a line drive punt. 
rolls past Mastriani and will be down at the 36-yard line. You're starting to see the splashing well, every, from the grass every field. Every time I think of a punt now, do you remember the the game back then, the Steelers and Dolphins, and that Monday night game in a rainstorm, and the ball got punted into the air and just landed into the grass like that and didn't move. It was just perfect. And that's how this weather is looking right now. You're seeing the puddles start to come out. You're seeing the field getting torn apart right now. It looked beautiful before the start of the game. Did we get a before and after pick? Yeah, I would love to see what the, what it's going to look like at the end of this game with these conditions. We'll have to check afterwards. <laughs> but first and 10 from the 26-yard line. Looking to throw this time. Mastriani incomplete intended for Cottage. Cottage was out there in the flat. He was open. If, if Mastriani just delivers him the ball in stride where he just misses out of reach of Cottage. Maybe Cottage just bounces outside and makes a big play for North Haven. So the first pass play from this Nighthawks team. So the incompletion leads to second and 10. And if you're North Haven, you got 6-12 to go here. Still plenty of time to make up here. This but is a huge, this, this drive right here is massive. Because they get the ball in the second half, you said? They yes, they with, do. Yes. So this is a massive, must we need to, uh, North Haven needs to score some points right here to cut into this lead. Pass complete to Brian Moran. Brian Moran gets the catch there for a gain of looks like six on the play. And so that's, and that's okay. They run. They go back to same type of pass concept right there and sees the guy underneath a little flat route gets some yards just to get into a manageable third down for this Nighthawk offense. So third and four after the completion. Third and four. Mastriani going to take it upon himself, try to snake back up the middle. He's close, but I think he'll be just short of the first down. You know what I'm doing. You're going for I'm it. Going for it, baby. And there's a it, oh, there you got it. And we got an injury timeout here. Man down with a helmet. Off. We're going to take a quick break here. 5.53 to go. You're watching Thanksgiving football on NHTV. Arnold's Jewelers, the North Haven Diamond Center. 117 Washington Avenue in North Haven. Decades of experience and a deep commitment to the North Haven community. Visit us today at thearnoldsjewelers.net. North Haven Funeral Home, 36 Washington Avenue, North Haven. Since 1953, the one source families rely on for caring, compassionate service. North Haven Funeral Home. Five fifty-three to go. North Haven trailing thirteen nothing, facing a fourth and one after the injury timeout. Big fourth down here. North Haven is going for it. It's a run up the middle. That's DeMauro, and he's got enough for the first down. So big first down there. And uh, one, of the, one of the games we're keeping an eye on here is New London. They're facing NFA. They are currently leading that game 14-0. But North Haven, before anything, anything outside has to happen, they have to win this game, and they're trailing 13-0 with the clock running here in the second quarter. First and 10 from the 38-yard line. Mastriani rolls out to throw and avoids one sack, still on his feet. And he's going to get sacked for a loss of three yards. Mike, I'm sorry. I was talking. The, the weather is its actually getting heavier. The rain is, the heavy stuff is here. And it's going to get more uncomfortable for both of these teams. Ball carriers, defensive linemen, offensive linemen. It's going to be just an absolute slop fest. And that's what it's becoming. And now North Haven and they... Third, second and long in a situation they don't want to be in. How can they get back to having positive yards moving so forward instead of going backwards? So a sack there for Shelton. Handoff goes to McCormick on the wing again. And the ball's on the ground again and Shelton's going to get it. 
A fumble recovery by Harrison Souza. Number 22 for Shelton picks up the fumble from number 22 in North Haven, and that is a big turnover and I for North Haven. I believe that's the second turnover, and I think it might be the second turnover of Artie McCormick right now. You're seeing this weather really impact North Haven more than it's impacting Shelton. And Shelton, the two turnovers in this game get a short field again now where they've been able to really have their way in the trenches and running the football. Do they go up three scores before the half? This is a huge, huge drive for both teams heading in to the half. First and 10 from the 40 yard line. So first and 10 for the Gales from the 40 yard line. And the snap goes on the ground and Sepkaski dives right on it. So the weather really affecting some of these snaps. We saw that punt earlier in the game that really affected the rain, and, and now this one here. I was just looking, speaking of the rain, I was just looking at Twitter, and there was a play on Twitter that said Cheshire and between Southerton had three straight fumbles. So this weather's not just impacting this game. This weather's impacting statewide right now. So second down and 10 for the Gales. Reed gets the handoff in, trying to push through and gets a couple yards on second effort there. So we'll see where it's marked, but I think a gain of three on the play for Devin Reed. Devin Reed almost got out of there, but a great job right there by the North Haven defender holding on and waiting for his backup to help with the tackle. So another third and long for Sheldon. Do we see a quick pass? We've been seeing some bubble screens, quick get out passes right there from Subkaski, but does North Haven bring any pressure? I would, if they're going to throw the ball, I'd like to see some pressure. Third and eight. Hand off again up the middle. This time it's Cole St. Pierre crossing the 40, uh, 35 yard line, well short of the first down marker. Gain of three for Shelton's leading, uh, leading rusher coming into today. And it's fourth down in, in a situation where it's fourth to manageable. I'm Shelton. Michael, you know what I'm doing. You're going for it. <laughs> this isn't Madden, Trevor. Oh, I don't. Do you know what the funny thing is? I never go for it on Madden. <laughs> but in a situation like this where you're up 13 nothing, two and a half minutes left, they've been able to move the ball on North Haven's defense. Why not in a, in a situation like this? Fourth down and five. They are going for it. Are they, are they trying to draw they him off sides? Yeah, they it could, could be that, too. It could be, which it looks like. And the like Gales do call timeout. So with 2.11 to go here in the second, Shelton leads 13-0. You're watching Thanksgiving football on NHTV. The Rotary Club of North Haven, where the business community comes together. For personal growth and leadership development, Rotary makes one a better community citizen. For more information, please visit nhrotary.org today. Arnold's Jewelers, the North Haven Diamond Center, 117 Washington Avenue in North Haven. Decades of experience and a deep commitment to the North Haven community. Visit us today at thearnoldsjewelers.net. 2.11 to go here in the second quarter. Shelton leads 13-0. Fourth and five for Shelton at the 35-yard line. So we'll see what Shelton decides to do after the timeout. They were, I think they were trying to draw North Haven off sides. I think they're going, Michael, they're going for it. They're, they're still going for it. Interesting call here. Oh, well, you're the road team. You're the underdog. In a situation like this where you're in the opponent's territory, you got to take a chance and you got to go for it. We'll see and how. I'm not just saying that just because I always say go for it, but in this situation, yeah. Fourth and five. Handoff flea flicker. Sepkaski can't handle the pitch back, and he's going to get sacked by Brian Moran. A much needed play by this Nighthawk defense right there. They had a few guys open, they caught them. But right there with the weather, this is what with the weather, you can't get your footing and a heck of a play and a much needed play from this Nighthawk defense. So it was Moran and also Luke Asbury on the sack there, forcing the turnover on downs and really good field position for North Haven with 2.04 to go. They have all their timeouts 
and 204 to go, and they get the ball back to start the second half. So this could really turn into an interesting game here. Yeah, this is a kind of make a break drive type. Mastriani throws it deep up the middle and intercepted by Michael Spadaccino. And he loses the football. And diving on it is Shelton. This is a wild, wild game, Michael, right now. Nobody wants to hold on to the football today. No one wants to hold on to the football. No one wants to. <laughs> Nobody wants to. Yeah, but Spadaccino's had a heck of an impact in this game with the return. And now the pick. And now Shelton goes back on a turn of events like this. So Michael Spadaccino, who opened up the game with a kickoff return for a touchdown, now adds an interception to the mix. And they're winning the turnover battle. They're winning the, the they're rushing winning battle. All, they're winning on all facets of the game right now, and that's why it is 13-0 Shelton. First and 10 from the 48-yard line. St. Pierre, the Pierre gets the carry. Crossing midfield, still on his feet. Forward progress stopped at the 48-yard line. So a gain of four for Shelton on the play. I'm surprised uh, Shelton doesn't have a little more urgency with this offense, trying to, with the clock narrowing down to almost halftime. Surprised we're not seeing them more possibly try to get into field goal range. If in a situation like this, you might not be seeing any field goals, but maybe giving them a better opportunity to extend this lead right now in North Haven. Second and eight from the 49-yard line. Man in motion, that's Ostrowski. And Sepkaski rolling out and getting around the edge, stepping out of bounds, stopping the clock at the 44, 45-yard line. And that's a good job by Shelton. Get man in motion right there, set in the edge, and following his blockers and making it a manageable third and five right here. And in opponent's territory again, short field. Michael, I think I'm going to have to say it again. If it gets to a four down territory, I might have to go for it. It could be four uh, things. It could be no, four no, no, thing no, goal no, no, from no. the other stop. One I'm yard not, line. I'm not, and you're going for I'm not it. that crazy. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. Third and five from the 45. Shotgun formation. Two wide receivers out. Devin Reed behind the quarterback. And it goes to Reed. Reed trying to get through the hole. And he's close to the first down marker, depending on where forward progress stopped. It looks like he did on second effort get that first down and a little extra. So Shelton moves the change with 57 seconds to go in the half. And I, Did they take a timeout? They might have taken a timeout. I don't know because, oh, the clock is running. Okay. They still have two timeouts right now. It's first and ten. Do we do we see Sapkowski drop back now and make? We've seen him a couple times try to get the ball out to his receivers, but his weather has had such a great impact on all players in this game. Low snap. Sapkowski loses his footing and he's going to get touched. And another sack there for Brian Moran. This time losing ten yards on the play. Well, he came in, Brian Moran, leading the team in sacks with two. So now he's he's had an impact on this defensive line for North Haven. So, and you're seeing, I, as I keep saying every play, it feels like I'm, I'm repeat right now. This field is, the field conditions are terrible. The footing is probably terrible for these ball carriers. So they have to really, a lot of slow developed plays because of this weather. Timeout by Shelton. You're watching Thanksgiving football on NHTV. North Haven Funeral Home, 36 Washington Avenue, North Haven. Since 1953, the one source families rely on for caring, compassionate service. North Haven Funeral Home. The Rotary Club of North Haven, where the business community comes together. For personal growth and leadership development, Rotary makes one a better community citizen. For more information, please visit nhrotary.org today. Coming out of the break, it is a first down and a big gain there from Sepkaski to Galki for the first down. Well, that's what all the past concepts have been today from Shelton. Screen plays, bubble screen. You'll see a little slip screen right there, tight end screen right there, getting the big boy involved, and a huge play right now. And with 22 seconds left, and 
I believe the clock is running. They haven't used their final timeout. They're trying to get closer. I think they're going to take it right now. So a huge play by Shelton. And right now, this North Haven crowd team, and I even think the press box in here is a little stunned to see what's going on with the results in this first half. 18 seconds ago, you're watching Thanksgiving football on NHTV. Arnold's Jewelers, the North Haven Diamond Center, 117 Washington Avenue in North Haven. Decades of experience and a deep commitment to the North Haven community. Visit us today at thearnoldsjewelers.net. North Haven Funeral Home, 36 Washington Avenue, North Haven. Since 1953, the one source families rely on for caring, compassionate service. North Haven Funeral Home. Eighteen seconds to go in the half. Shelton leads 13-0. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. After a 27-yard pass, Sepkaski throw, looking to throw. Pushed out of the pocket. Able to get a couple yards, and clock continues to run. North Haven called the timeout before the break, so now Shelton just called their final timeout. We'll keep it here for the final eight seconds of this second half, so again a two for Sepp Kasky. Brantford leading East Haven 12 nothing. That's one of the chips that have to fall if North Haven could come back into this game. We had New London leading 14 nothing as well. And the other the other game we need to keep an eye on is Foreign against Jonathan Law. Jonathan Law currently sitting at that eighth seed. In the Class M standings, and just in front of North Haven is East Haven and New London. All with different point implications here, Trevor. I still don't quite understand how the point system works. I was never good at math, so I'm not really I'm, I'm not the math. I'm good at math, but you got wins against upper class well, and because, lower class uh, and... Like you this, get points for each team that you beat in the schedule, yeah, if, so there's so a lot of that like going on. a double on. L team, it's it's more significant. It's it's a more significant number or team or win, I should say, point scale. It's more important if you beat a double L, an L, than it would be if you're playing like an S or an or double S. Eight point seven seconds to go here in the second quarter. This looks like it could be the final play of the half. That has just been dominated by Shelton and the Gales on this senior day Thanksgiving morning. Nothing behind you and don't let anything near the sidelines. Cover the sidelines and nothing behind you. Sepkaski pushed out of the pocket and he's going to be set. And it's kind of how the, uh, this first half has gone. It's been a, it's been a defensive battle, a defensive battle and an offensive struggle for both teams. But Shelton right now up 13 nothing, Michael. Yeah, 13 nothing. Shelton leads this one. And you look at the totals, you know, out 135 to 24 in total yards. That's before that final play there. So it's a little less than that for Shelton. But North Haven, the only positive they have is they have two turnovers and three sacks. Other than that, Shelton is dominating every other statistic so far. Yeah, they're having their way. I mean, you already right off the bat. The, the the energy was high. It was the it's Thanksgiving football, and Spadaccino just really kind of cut the sail right off and and scoring the big untouched touchdown, opening kickoff, and North and Shellen's really I mean North Haven I should say first off they really haven't been able to take grasp of anything right now offensively, defensively, and special teams wise. But Shellen is just taking advantage, and they're doing a heck of a good job playing North Haven's type of football. Yeah, absolutely, and. You kind of wonder what Coach Sagnell is going to be telling these guys in the second half. I'd like to be a fly on the wall in this one year because you, you wonder how he's going to let out this frustration. It's senior day for these kids, and you're trying to think to yourself, like, you want to play as if it's your last game. There is no tomorrow, as Apollo Creed once said. And that's exactly what the message should be, Michael. It's for seniors, this is it. It's your last game, and possibly North Haven in your career and for the juniors and sophomores that are playing even some freshmen time to step up this is I mean 
you want to end your season on the right note. You don't want to go into next year at losing a Thanksgiving game because, well, let's be honest, this North Haven team has dominated the North or the Thanksgiving schedule. I know it's been Amity in pre- previous years, and it's Shelton this year, but North Haven has to find an answer offensively. Their defense is keeping them in the game. I know it's 13 nothing, but... This defense is keeping them in the game with some turnovers. It's their offense where we've been talking about their offense throughout this entire year as the backbone of this team. And right now, it's been anything but. The defense has had the struggles this year, but they are playing solid football. They are getting after the quarterback. They're making plays, turnovers, pressure in the quarterback. It's just can the offense get it going. Now, obviously, the elements are a factor. Oh, yeah. And the fact that the passing game is really non-existent here. So the question is, you have Joe Mastriani going into the half, Mm -hmm. one for four for six yards and an interception. Do you abandon the passing game in the second half knowing the elements and knowing this isn't a team that really passes much to begin with, but the struggles that Mastriani is already having in this first half and a couple drop passes. So he could have been three. He could have been two for four or three for four in this game, Mm -hmm. but they try to throw deep. Throws an interception. Where do you draw the line here on do we abandon the pass? Or obviously because you're trailing by two scores, you got to get some of that chunk back quick. Well, how do they answer this drive, the coming drive in the second half? How, how does your first drive look moving forward? Because that can be a telling sign for the rest of this second half. The weather is not going anywhere. The rain's going to get harder. And we already know they don't throw the ball as it is if it was rain or shine. But in a situation like this where the conditions are awful and it's going to be hard for ball carriers to really get grip of that ball, you can't abandon the pass game, but you got to find a way to get that rushing attack going. Because you said it, Michael, they have 24 yards total offense, you're saying to me? Which, yeah. and, and in a situation, it might be a little more, but in this situation, it's 24 yards. It's... It ain't going to win you no football game. It's not going to win you no football game. So they're going to have to get back to controlling the line of scrimmage. And Shelton, I've been keep saying it, they're playing North Haven's game. They might have a few passes here or there. They might, they're might. they more of a pass-happy team, but because of the weather, they got to run the football. And they have a running back by committee, just like North Haven does. But they're executing, and North Haven's not right now. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about the first half and what North Haven has to do to come back from this game. 13 nothing, Shelton Leeds. You're watching Thanksgiving football on NHTV. The Rotary Club of North Haven, where the business community comes together. For personal growth and leadership development, Rotary makes one a better community citizen. For more information, please visit nhrotary.org today. Arnold's Jewelers, the North Haven Diamond Center, 117 Washington Avenue in North Haven. Decades of experience and a deep commitment to the North Haven community. Visit us today at thearnoldsjewelers.net. 13 nothing is the score. Shelton leading this one on Thanksgiving. And, you know, as you could see from outside, it, it, it's a rainy mess. It's not a good day. It, it, nothing is really going North Haven's way. You, you would think on senior day, the gods would open the clouds and have sunshine. <laughs> but Can you believe it? Three months, we didn't get no rain. And in the past week, we've gotten rain three times. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's fascinating. And <laughs> of course, it's Thanksgiving that's happening. And the, the old saying, when it rains, it pours, it's, it's really been the tale for North Haven here. They don't really have the crowd behind them because of the rain. The band is not here today because of the rain. Mm-hmm. So and it, in, the cheerleaders aren't really in their full gear because of the rain. Mm-hmm. And perhaps because of the rain, North Haven came out a little flat here in the first half. I think they came with a lot of emotion. They were excited. at the. I mean, I had the, I'm not going to lie. I had them riled up a little right before making their entrance. They had their energy. They were... It, they were excited. Even whatever was going to be the results of today in general with the state of Connecticut and the playoffs coming up next week, they looked fired up. They knew what was at stake. And I really think that opening kickoff just kind of just blew the sail out right there. This whole stadium was just like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> it's Thanksgiving football. We're excited. We're ready to go. We're going to try to get a nice win and go into next year feeling good about ourselves. But it's been anything but, and I, like you said, Michael, the fly on the wall, I can only imagine what that halftime 
speech is going to be for Coach Zag and the coaching staff as a whole offensively because they have no no movement of the football right now. And for North Haven to win, that we've seen since we've been doing this, me and you, North Haven wins the football or wins football games when they are running the ball at a high rate. And right now, it's been anything but that, Michael. Yeah, it really is. And usually Thanksgiving is is a game that North Haven has done pretty well in. Yeah. Given they've dominated. I mean, it's a new team now. We, we're used to Amity. They've dominated this the regular season. But with the past, I don't remember the last time Amity won. But Shelton, down year, we're thinking maybe the beginning of the year, this is going to be a great, compelling matchup. Shelton is, has been a consistent top tier team in the state of Connecticut having a down year rebuild year but right now they started off 0 and 7 coming in 2 and 7 now a two game winning streak one of those wins against Jonathan Law who is going to possibly be a playoff team one of the teams on North Haven is hoping they do not win today but North Haven's got to take care of business and North Haven has done anything but that right now defensively I'm going to give them credit because they are keeping this team in the game because Shellen could be up I don't know Three or four scores right now. They've had opportunities right there. Lay on the hold right before the half. They had great field position. They get the pick. Then they have the tight end screen. They're set up at the 25 with about a minute left. And North Haven capital and, and they never capitalized on it. North Haven took advantage. They made a big, big play. Can they do that in the second half? And it all comes down to this first drive. The first drive of the second half will be very telling for the rest of the outcome of this game. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you on that. I mean, I know there's so much time, but with with the conditions that are out right now, with the way that Shelton has kept North Haven off the field by playing into their style, would say, oh, North Haven, you want to run the football? Well, we're going to run the football with our running back by committee, and they're doing that right now. They're keeping North Haven's offense off the field. They've been able to gain success, four to five yards a pop, and they're having their way right now. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned before, or let's look at the running totals mm-hmm. for North Haven. It's really been a struggle for them. Joe Mastriani has seven carries for 12 yards. Not a good day. And Artie McCormick, four carries for 13 yards and a lost fumble. I believe he has two lost fumbles. There's two fumbles in this game. I think Martin McCormick has two. So the weather's impacting these ball carriers of North Haven right now and in general. I mean, no, it feels like we've seen a couple plays in this game that nobody wants to hold on to the football. And I get it. It's tough. Trust me, I played in these conditions. It ain't fun, Michael. It is not fun. There's nothing worse than playing in cold, windy rain. And right now, that is what's going on. We're looking at the press. We're, we're in the press box right now looking. This field is a mess, and it's going to be an absolute. It, it's going to be fun to watch the second half just because of the rain and how sloppy of a, how sloppy this field is going to be. But the big deal, the big thing is. North Haven's got to get somehow back to what they do best. One thing I noticed with Artie McCormick in this game that we haven't really seen is he's getting carries off the wing yeah. instead of being the, the guy behind center. Mm-hmm. Do they you know, switch it up and be like, all right, we tried to trick them and they know it's coming. Do we go I'm, back to what he, he's comfortable with? It seems easier said than done, but with the way that Shelton has been really – Dominate and penetrating that de- with the defensive line, penetrating the backfield of North Haven. It don't matter if they're running outside the tackles. It doesn't matter if they're running inside the, the tackles. It, it doesn't matter right now. Shelton is having their way defensive. They're getting in the backfield. And that's why you're saying North Haven. I mean, you just said it, Joey Mastriani. Seven rushes. You're thinking at this point, well, they're 56 yards. He's got 12 yards. I, that's not going to do it. They're one in three on this season when he rushes for under 80 yards. And right now, it don't look like he's going to get to the 80 yards, and if that's the case, it could be a loss for North Haven. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one here, and, you know, we try to do our score for watching because you know North Haven's not doing that. And we saw Brantford is doing their part in getting North Haven into the playoffs. They're beating East Haven last time we checked 14 nothing. Yeah, I'm trying to New get New London was, tr- was leading their game 14 nothing. I don't know if we have an update yet with uh, Jonathan Law. And Ford in that game, Jonathan Law currently sitting at that final Law eight spot. is up with two minutes ago. I got Law 3 nothing right now to start the second quarter. So actually getting a field goal 
In this shot, rainy yeah, weather, that's, day, right? that's impressive right how there. About, how about this? Cheshire's up 3-2 to two on Southerton. Uh, are 3 we, to 2 3 to 2 Who and, had the over in that game? <laughs> who's playing baseball on a football field today? Who's on first and who's on <laughs> yeah. second, right? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, 3 to 2 I mean, but this is what this weather's going to do, man. I'm, I'm just going through. Yeah, 3 nothing, Jonathan Law. I don't have anything with... New London currently. Last time I checked was 14 nothing. And who was the other team we were looking? East Haven. East Haven against Brantford. And Brantford was winning that one 14 nothing last time we checked. I don't have nothing right there. But well, you know. We'll, yeah, throughout the game, I'm going to be. Yeah, we'll see. We'll do some scoreboard watching. But obviously, the scoreboard. <laughs> the most that we, important the, scoreboard. The, the most important <laughs> scoreboard that we need to watch is North Haven and Shelton. And right now, Shelton is leading this one 13 nothing. Should we be really surprised, though? Like we say, oh, we're surprised that it's 13 nothing. I mean, Shelton's play. Shelton is, look, they might be having a down year, but Shelton is still Shelton. And North Haven has had a up-and-down season. It's been an inconsistent year. They've had moments where they've looked great, and then there's been moments where it's looked very sloppy. And right now, in the situation that they are in, it's been sloppy. So we can only hope that North Haven bounces back because it looks like, she I was about to say, she and Shelton, has the full-on energy, the full-on momentum is on their side. Does North Haven try to cut into this lead? And I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how this team wakes up for the second half. Okay. Maybe, maybe they're not woken up yet. I don't know. Because, you know, morning games. I mean, you were going to say a Friday night. Yeah. We're, we're still getting used to it right now. But we'll see how they bounce back. And I, I feel like that coaching staff, they'll make adjustments. They'll have the right adjustments to get this team moving forward in the second half. All right, 13 nothing is the score. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, the final thoughts before heading into the second half, and North Haven starts the ball with the second half. You're watching Thanksgiving Football on NHTV. North Haven Funeral Home. 36 Washington Avenue, North Haven. Since 1953, the one source families rely on for caring, compassionate service. North Haven Funeral Home. The Rotary Club of North Haven, where the business community comes together. For personal growth and leadership development, Rotary makes one a better community citizen. For more information, please visit nhrotary.org today. We're going to get started for the start of the second half here. Michael Valenti alongside Trevor Keyes. Shelton leads this one 13-0. Started on a kickoff return for a touchdown from Michael Spadaccino. And then a passing touchdown to um, from Logan Spikaski to Cole Ostrowski. So the two wide receivers today for Shelton leading the way. North Haven will start with the second half. With the North Haven starts the ball with the uh, starts the second half with the ball. There we go. <laughs> the cold is starting to get to me. Even though oh, we're in the press box, it's cold. It's, I'm a little cold, man. I'm a little cold. Well, the problem is, even if we're heated, we have the window open for our cameraman Vic Hogg, who the you know, man Vic, our yeah, guy Vic, baby. I mean. Thanksgiving is always a tough time for our production crew because we have a limited, because obviously it's Thanksgiving. But on top of it, we got rain. We got rain nice. and we got cold. Has it been nice the past couple of years for Thanksgiving? You got to remember, this was my first Thanksgiving honestly, back in Connecticut. Honestly, in the years past that we've done Thanksgiving games, the only time we had inclement weather was the first time we did it and it was snowing. I've not, I always wanted to do it. I mean, a snow game, that would be fun. And that, would be and that year, I was actually out doing, like, pregame stuff oh, you, out huh? in front of the crowd. So I'm out there shivering with barely a pea coat and gloves on as this <laughs> one gets rolled to the 25-yard line. Brandon Stevens is going to take it and go nowhere with it. So no return on that one, pretty much. So North Haven starts at the 25-yard line. So they got 75 yards to make something happen here and get back into this game. Yeah, and like we said during the half, this is... Could be the drive of game, but the way that Shelton's been playing, the style they should been, I should be saying, is they've been slowing down the game, running the football and keeping North Haven off the field and controlling all the tempo and time of possession in this game. So this, I know it's just started the second half, but is this the drive of the game here on Thanksgiving at Vandercourt Field? First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Behind center, it is Mastriani. 
So we'll see if the clock is running. Is the clock supposed to be running? And Nick Romano gets his first carry and gets about five yards on the play. Yeah, we're so you're gonna. It'd be funny if people saw how we're looking. We're trying to look through the, the fog, the rain. It's it's getting hard for us to see over here. So I don't know how much time came off the clock there, and it's reset now. So it is accurate now with 11:28 to go in the third quarter. Second and ten, or excuse me, second and five from the 30-yard line. Mastriani, Mastriani is hit behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a couple yards on the play. So again, this really tough day for Joe Mastriani. Eight carries for ten yards. Yeah, and I mean credit to the Shell and defense. They've they come out of the second half and they look just as great defensively, especially on that deep front seven, than they did in the first half. So North Haven coming out third and seven it looks like an obvious passing down for the Nighthawks. Third and seven. From the 28-yard line. And they will run it. It's Romano again, and he's hit. Gains a couple yards, and that's it. So he gets back to the previous line, and it's fourth and five. So right out of the gate, they come out three and out. Not exactly what North Haven wanted there on their first possession of the second half, trailing two scores. No, not at all. I mean, I can't say it enough, but job well done to the Shelton front seven right now. They're, they're getting into the backfield, and they are winning the battle in the trenches right now, Michael. They absolutely are, and back deep is Michael Spaticino as Evan DeMauro will be back to punt. You can hear the silence of what crowd is there today in this rainy Thanksgiving morning. Demoro gets the punt off. It's a short punt, takes a couple bounces in North Haven's way before it hits a puddle and dies right at the 42 yard line. And Shelton will take over first and 10 at the 42 yard line. So, Trevor, your Thanksgiving game, do you remember much of it at all? Like, I oh, mean, yeah, it was I North Haven. We won. North Haven Amity game. Yeah, we won. So your senior few, day. I had a few sacks in the game, and uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, were you? Was so, it a home game or an away no, game? It was a home game. You we were, were a home it game. It was a, a long time ago. So, Fourteen years ago. Wow. Or twenty. I, I lose track of time now. I, I'm starting to feel my uh, age, <laughs> even though I'm young. I know. I know. But yeah, it's a. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I always liked Thanksgiving football. It was nothing better than waking up early in the morning to go hit somebody and not get in trouble for it. Right. <laughs> First and 10, Reed gets a handoff, breaks a couple tackles, and is stiffed. So he tries to break a couple tackles, ends up getting no yards on the play. So nice stop again by the North Haven defense that's really keeping them in this game. Yeah, you said it, Michael. North Haven has done a heck of a job defensively and defensive line to getting in the backfield and doing their job of causing confusion and chaos back there. And keeping them in this game, I should also say, like you said, Michael. Second and 10 from the 42-yard line. Clock continues to run. 9.20 to go in the third quarter. Skepkaski throws to Spedicino. And gets it to the 48-yard line. So a gain of six on the play. And they'll take that. I mean, North Haven's playing soft coverage, playing off of them. So they're going to take advantage of the soft zone right there. And you see it right there. Short little yards. You've seen short passes all throughout this game from Shell. And that's been their game plan is running the football, keeping North Haven offense on the sidelines and when they do decide to throw the ball it's been screens short little out routes and routes just to get the ball quickly out of the hands of Subkaski and getting it to his receivers ball on the ground and I think Shelton was able to recover that one another bad snap so the elements playing a factor in this game yet again and that's been a couple times by Shelton probably the I'd probably be nitpick if I'm doing it realistically, but that's probably been the one big negative I've seen from the Shelton team is the snaps. They've had a couple opportunities, North Haven, where it hasn't gone their way, 
And Shelton is fortunate enough to at least be punting the ball. Fourth and six with eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. North Haven forces a three and out. So the defense still holding up on this 13-0 deficit. Low snap, but able to get it off. Takes a North Haven, or excuse me, a Shelton bounce past Mastriani and will be picked up and down at the 21, maybe 22-yard line. So it'll be first and 10. What I was going to say, just by looking of what this game has been going for special teams for Shelton, if I'm North Haven, I'm bringing a pump block because the snaps have been, most of the time, have been low on the ground, and it's taken a while for the punter to get the ball. If I'm a North Haven or whoever the special teams coach is, I'm bringing like a pump block next time if they get into that situation because of, of the elements right now. And it's been slowly developed, so why not? And especially knowing that you're down 13 nothing, you need some sort of momentum builder for this team. On the flip side of that, does Shelton bring the punter closer to the center to make that snap a little easier? Something, because right now that's been multiple times where we've seen – Bad snaps from Shelton. Mast Mastriani breaks a tackle, crosses the 30, dives to the first down marker. He's going to get it, gain of 11. So Mastriani with a nice move there, faking the pass, taking it upon himself for a gain of 11. And we've seen that a lot this year where he looks to be going pass first, but nothing there, and he decides to keep it, play the smart decision, and get a nice yard in his most successful run of the day. Yes, it is. His first double-digit run of the day. North Haven's first double-digit gain of the day. Which is crazy because we're talking 7 minutes, 7.15 currently in the third quarter, and it's their first double-digit run. First and 10 after the run from Mastriani. Mastriani looking to throw again. Tucks it in. And gains... Three on the play. The so that's kind of what they need to do here as Mastriani gets his 10th carry of the game for 24 yards. Just get that positive yards. You get something going off <laughs> that. get Exactly, Michael. You're taking the words right out of my mouth. Get something. As if you could get some kind of positivity, that's all you'll take, especially for North Haven. And two to three yards, four yards, it may not be much on the scoreboard or the stat sheet, but so it goes a long way for these team. especially run-heavy teams. Second and eight. After the carry, Mastriani again gets to the 40, pushes through, and he's close to the first down marker. He will be close. It looked like it from here. It was a first down. Looks like the ref is, what, we got a yard short? Third and one? Yeah, he's going to be short. going to be about a yard short. But you're, you're starting to see a little more confidence from this rushing attack right now. They're starting to move the ball and starting to get a feel of this offense again. Third and one from the 42-yard line. Man in motion. Nick Romano gets the carry. Finds an open hole. Got the first down. Pass midfield. And North Haven finally getting something going on this drive under six minutes to go in the third. And you know Coach Zagnell is loving to see that right now. Just as long as it's positivity, they'll take it any day. And right now North Haven is having some success in the running game. Nick Romano with the gain of 10 there, getting them into Shelton territory. First and 10 from the 48-yard line. Mastriani. Mastriani to the 45, keeping his feet going. Finally brought down at the 43-yard line. Gain of five for the senior. Gain about six yards on that play. Clock continues to run. Five minutes to go. And one of the big things for, I, I feel like, North Haven, for them to be successful is what we saw last game against Xavier, or last home game, I should say, when they were using Brandon Stevens, they were using Nick Marano, or Nick Romano, Chris Catella, Tyler DeMauro. We were naming names at the last game. And that's why I feel like if they can do that, where Shellen has been doing that today, they can really make, you know, cause a lot of issues for this defense of, of Shellen right now because they've been the aggressor. And there's an official stoppage. And a penalty against North Haven. Is that the first flag today? Penalty Second. North Haven. Legal procedure, so they're going to so lose five yards on the play on their second <laughs> penalty of the game. Is North Haven the only team to have the penalties today? Yes. Really? Wow, two penalties. These refs, yeah, both, want, these both. refs don't want to throw no flags. Yeah, it's been a very <laughs> disciplined game for both teams. That's good. So second, second and nine. Mast uh, Romano. Romano on the carry again. 
trying to get those yards back. He gets a couple back. So Romano, four carries for 20 yards here. Past the midway point in this third quarter. Shelton leading 13-0. Going back and forth defensively on both these teams. It's really just been one drive offensively for Shelton and the opening kickoff is the difference maker. Trying to get around the edge is Mastriani and doesn't get much there as he's pushed out of bounds. Honestly, Michael, this is what I expected this game to be because of the elements. There's a late flag. I just Is that a late flag? Let's see. It might be some extracurricular activity forcing that penalty. Late flag on the play. It's going to be a dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Against North Haven. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh, for, did he throw the ball? Did he spike the ball? I don't know what happened, but he, the, the back judge is the one that threw the flag. Interesting. And North Haven is now putting themselves in a situation where nobody wants to be. I don't care what offense or team they want to be. It's 4th and 24. Nobody wants to be in a situation like this. So when you felt like North Haven was moving the ball, gaining a little confidence, they go and shoot themselves in the foot with two penalties in a row and it's not a situation you, we've only talked about three penalties in this game but the three penalties are on North Haven and two of them being very impactful to North Haven high snap punt nearly blocked but it's a short punt doesn't even make it to midfield and with that They're saying it's officially marked at midfield, so it's a 13-yard punt for Evan tomorrow. And just the head-scratching... The conditions are getting very, 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 very impactful in this game. Oh, I think that ball also got tipped is why that punt didn't go as far. Because he's been punting the ball pretty well today, but Shellen once again, making a, a, a big play. 3.29 to go in the third quarter. Shelton leads 13-0. <coughs> First and 10 from midfield. Sepkaski throws it deep to Spedicino, and it's underthrown. On the play there defensively is Brandon Stevens. I'm actually shocked that we saw a ball go that far today. And... Good, good coverage by North Haven. A little, it was very underthrown by Subkaski, but with these weather conditions, the wind as well too, I, it's expected. Second and ten after the incomplete pass, and I think Shelton was probably trying to put the dagger into North Haven's heart there. Well, right now, if they go in and score, especially with the way they've been moving the ball, if they could get a long drive and get a touchdown, yeah, that could be the dagger for North Haven. Second and 10 at midfield. Man in motion. That's Ostrowski. Sepkaski rolling out to the right side. Tiptoes through, and he's close to the first down marker. So the running game continues to be very effective for the Gales here today. I mean, don't change anything that's work. I mean, that's been working. And that's what I was about to say, North Dave, because I'm so used to seeing them have successful runs, but Shelton right now has been doing it with the running back by committee, but also Sapkowski has been doing a heck of a job of getting himself involved in the offensive game plan, especially since they haven't been really throwing the football today. Second and one, or third and one from... And Cole St. Pierre's going to break through and keep this game wide open. Touchdown, Gales! St. Pierre... 42-yard touchdown run for him. And the Gales now lead 19-0. And it's, that's exactly how this day has been going for Shelton, where they've been able to just run the football on North Haven. And North Haven's held their ground, but could that be the nail in the coffin? I know there's still a quarter and a half to go. But with the way North Haven has been playing offensively and not really been able to gain any confidence and any momentum in running the football, 
it's going to be an uphill battle for them. So right now with 3.02 to go in the third quarter, here's a stat for you, Trev. The total offense for North Haven is 78 yards. I ain't going to win you a lot of football games. Cole St. Pierre, after that rush, has six rushes for 76 yards and a touchdown. They are, Cole St. Pierre is almost outgaining himself as the extra point attempt is no good. No, oh, I think they were going for two, and they did not get it. But, hey, that's one of the few plays that Shelton has had, you know, hasn't had success because they've been able to move the ball and have their way with this North Haven defense. So what does North Haven do right now? Down 19 nothing, And you just said Cole St. Pierre, 76 yards, has as many yards as North Haven's total offense? Is that what you told me? Yes. Oof. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's not a recipe for success if you're North Haven right now. No, it's not. It's definitely not. 3.02 to go in this game. Shelton leads this one 19 0. Michael Valenti alongside Trevor Keys. And this is. <laughs> we both are like, we don't even know how. <laughs> it's like, what do we say? <laughs> I mean, North Haven's had some games where yeah. they've, they've been, you know, blown out or had tough losses. This one here just. This is not the brand of football that we have seen in nope. the 10 years that we've been doing North Haven football games on NHTV. And you knew the weather was going to play a major factor, but it doesn't seem like it's really phased Shelton, whereas it's kind of put a, a huge hit on North Haven where you just said it, Michael. We're just so used to seeing them. They, they've had losses over the years. They've, they've had their struggles, but they've always been able to manage to run the football. And today it's been anything but that right now. And a good return there for North Haven and Artie McCormick getting it to midfield. So 2.55 to go here in the third quarter. North Haven trailing by three scores. And they, they got to get something going here. I was about to say, McCormick's name hasn't been called, but he's walking off the field a little gingerly holding that shoulder. Definitely something to monitor, but we haven't really called his name a lot today. Not at all. I mean... Looking at the stat sheet, he only has four carries today for 13 yards, but he also put the ball on the ground twice. Yes. Mastriani breaks a tackle and is stopped at around the 45-yard line. And after the whistle blows, a little extra pushing by Shelton. No flag on the play, but a gain of five for Mastriani. Some of the fans here calling for the flag. I mean, the, the conditions, especially in that middle, the 50-yard line is, it's like a, a pig pen right there. It's hard to keep balance. So when, you know, some defenses are making plays, sometimes they lose footing and they go a little farther or a little extra. And some people are a little upset right now, but that's how it is right now. A lot of people are upset right now with the, the results right now of this game. Clock continues to run. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. North Haven trying to get on the board. Nick Romano. Gets it close to the first down marker. He might have got it. I think he got the first down. So nice gain there for Nick Romano, who only has five carries, but he's got 26 yards in those five carries. So he's having himself a pretty decent day with the limited amount of time he's been touching the ball. He's, he's making the most of his opportunities, and that's a credit to him. So, But I'd like to see more. Like if, I could, if we see Chris Cotella, I haven't seen Chris Cotella's name, where he was having some success early on in the season would run the football title. DeMoro's had a success. Obviously, Mastriani and McCormick are the focal points of these of this team, but... Mastriani trying to go to the left side and stuffed gets maybe a yard on the play. When you start using those the plethora of talent that they have in that backfield, especially what we saw last game against Xavier, you would, you would expect to see that more today, but right now, just Shelton overall, that defensive line is just doing a heck of a job of winning the battle inside the trenches, Michael. Yeah, Mastriani with his 15th carry of the day with only 39 yards to show for it. Final minute in this third quarter. And they look to throw. Mastriani pass is complete to Brian Moran as he crosses the 30-yard line and is pushed out of bounds. And he's got enough for the first down, a gain of nine. And Brian Moran, he's had a nice little game today for North Haven, having a couple sacks on defense and now getting involved in the passing game. So he's had a nice game for the Nighthawks team. So first and 10, clock continues to run here. 
It looks like they'll try to get one more playoff before the end of the third quarter. And it will be Mastriani again. Finds a hole, keeping his feet on the ground, and there's just two or three gales there. Once he gets through that first hole, he's not getting that extra yardage that usually breaks free. And that's really why it's been a struggle for him today on a gain of, uh, I think, four. And that's going to end the third quarter. 19 nothing, Shelton Leeds. You're watching Thanksgiving Football on NHTV. Arnold's Jewelers, the North Haven Diamond Center, 117 Washington Avenue in North Haven. Decades of experience and a deep commitment to the North Haven community. Visit us today at thearnoldsjewelers.net. North Haven Funeral Home, 36 Washington Avenue, North Haven. Since 1953, the one source families rely on for caring, compassionate service. North Haven Funeral Home. We start the fourth quarter here, Shelton leading 19 nothing, but North Haven in Shelton territory, second and six at the 26 yard line. Michael Valenti alongside Trevor Keyes here on this Thanksgiving edition of, really, it's supposed to be Friday night football, but it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Michael's been wanting to say that all day. He just wants to say Friday night football. He misses, yeah. he misses the Friday night football. Yeah, <laughs> but it's been a really one-sided battle today as the Gales really been dominating offensively against North Haven. And Mastriani looks to pass. He throws it in the end zone. It is incomplete. Incomplete. Intended for Anthony Perillo. And Perillo looked like he had an opportunity to make that play. It looked like it might have just went right through his hands. So a, a nice opportunity or a nice play call right there from North Haven going with the pass and almost setting up in great, great field position, but a missed opportunity for them. So it's four down territory the rest of the way for North Haven. Third and six from the 26. And it'll be a run, trying to get around the edge. And that's Nick Romano who gets a yard. And I don't know, judging from what I'm seeing here, it looked like he could have had the cut back hole, but instead it goes the outside, and that stopped but it, him. That's that, you, do you know how hard it would be to cut back right now? <laughs> it, it, In that way, you're right. You're, you're, right. A, you're asking for a lot right there. <laughs> I understand where you're, you're coming from, but in any other situation, yes. But in this situation, it's going to be hard to try to make a cut back. Fourth and five after the one-yard carry from so, Nick Romano. For Romano, who's probably their best yards per carry man today. Six carries, 27 yards. Mastriani looks to throw. He has a man open. He throws it into the end zone and incomplete. But he had the man on the, on the Cretelli. He had him open. But he throws to Stevens again, and it's a turnover on down. Yeah, it looked like Cretelli had the wheel route, but also... You had Stevens. It was just yeah, sure. with the way this weather has been, the ball is not going to come out perfectly right there. And then a little sooner, it could have been a touchdown right there. But North Haven's a missed opportunity. And we've seen that a lot this year where they've gone into opponents' territory and they haven't been able to capitalize. And that's just another one that we've seen. Mastriani now uh, two for seven with an interception for 15 yards passing today. Which, two for seven, that's a lot of passing for North Haven. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm, I'm very surprised they threw the ball as much as they did today in the, situ in the elements that we're all dealing with. They really had no choice at this point, well, given this, the situation. Yeah, given the situation being down 19 nothing, yeah, you're going to expect a lot of passing. But it's tough to pass when you're not a passing team. That's, that's, that's the tough part. Sepkaski hands it off. And... Tripped up there. That's Kinnick. Gets no yards on the play. Second down. And St. Pierre runs off the sidelines there. Clock. 
clock continues to run. Ten and a half minutes to go in the game. Shelton leading 19 nothing. North Haven needs to make a stop here I don't defensively. I know if you noticed that Sipkeski is not in the backfield right now. It's Cole St. Pierre gets the direct snap. And North Haven stuffs him. No gain on the play. So back-to-back, -back, no gains. Cole St. Pierre, who broke off for a 42-yard touchdown run on the last drive. Leading rusher in today's game, 76 yards on seven carries and a touchdown. So 39 for the Gales. Third and nine. Clock continues to run under 10 minutes to go. Ball on the ground again and picked up and tackled behind the line of scrimmage. And that is number six, Jack Vargo. He did look like if he catches that ball instead of losing it and dropping it to the ground, he might have had an opening where it could have been a first down for Shelton, but a, a, a lucky break for North Haven right there as, again, a missed snap, a bobbled snap from Shelton. And this is where, I'm, right here in this situation right now, short field, you're down 19 nothing. There's still nine minutes left. If you're North Haven with what you've seen from Shelton so snapping the ball today and having trouble getting that ball out, I would, if I'm North Haven, I'm bringing some sort of pump block right now. It looks like the punter might have come in a yeah, little closer. You might have been right, too. The snap good this time and a good punt. Getting like, past midfield and down at the 47-yard line. called it. You did call it. He moved up. He knew that the center was having a tough time on these snaps today, not just in the punt formation, but even in the shotgun yes. formation. He's been putting the ball on the ground quite a few times, and North Haven not taking advantage just of those bad snaps. Yeah. They just plop right to the ground. Hasn't and, gone their way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 8.43 to go in the game. North Haven needs to score here. 19 nothing is the score. They need to score, and they need to score fast. North Haven deferred on the opening kickoff, mm -hmm. and Shelton answered with a kickoff return for a touchdown. I don't think anybody saw that one coming. And Michael, I, and I think that right there yeah. just set the tone for the crowd that is here and everyone else on the sidelines, I think, as it's a run up the middle. That's Nick Romano again pushing it through midfield and getting about three yards on the play. And you want to say, like, yeah, oh, it's the first play. It shouldn't impact the game overall, but... You're right. I mean, that play really kind of just put North Haven in a situation where they probably didn't feel coming into this week would happen, and it really completely flip-flopped this game with the first play of the game. Second and seven after the three-yard run. Mastriani pushes it to Moran, who gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. So that's a shovel pass. For no yards um, uh, to Moran, who has three receptions of the game for 15 yards. And the clock continues to run here. And, I mean, now they're just trying everything with shovel passes. We don't really see shovel passes from North Haven. Well, in this situation, the way that Shelton's been able to read out everything and really get everything from the start, you're going to have to do something different. And catch him off guard. Mastriani gets the carry and is stopped right there for maybe a yard, maybe two. So North Haven in a fourth and not really short situation. And the Shelton sideline making some noise here on this fourth down, which if North Haven can't convert, pretty much ices the game. Yeah, going to be under seven minutes. Yeah, if, if North Haven doesn't capitalize on this, it could be the nail in the coffin for both teams. Fourth and five from the 48-yard line. Mastriani throws. Incomplete intended for Stevens, and it's a turnover on downs. Gales will take over. North Haven has, has three timeouts, but even if you use them all, still have to get the ball back. Down two three more scores. Right down now. three scores. Yeah. It's 
Shelton is in the driver's seat now. They just run out this clock and make it three in a row to close out their season that started 0-7. And North Haven, after winning two state championships in the Class M tournament the past two years, they come down to Class M and they'll finish most likely 5-5 five and five unless something drastically changes in the last 646. Hand off. To St. Pierre and gets a gain of two on the play. Yeah, if I'm showing, I'm holding on to that ball as tight as I can. And if I'm North Haven, I'm trying to be as aggressive as I can, trying to strip that ball, get that out, maybe pick it up and score and get back into this game with the with the elements. You got to do something. Got to be aggressive. Go for the ball. And like I said, if you're Shetland, hold on to the football. Second and nine as the clock continues to run. Looks like they took out. Subkaski. I haven't seen him since I don't know if he's injured, but I don't I haven't seen him in right now. Second and eight. Direct snap goes to Vargo. Who gets to midfield, so no gain on the play there for Vargo. It, it's possible that Subkaski, who we've seen him run and we've seen him throw. Yeah. He uh might be taken out just as it's precautions. Precautions because you're up. I don't I don't know. If they just you know what, it's the end of the game and just end on a high note and let Jack Vargo come in and get some run. He he's a senior too, so perhaps you That's know true. with it being the last game. That's true. Let Vargo get some reps in mm -hmm. on this final uh, game of the season. Obviously, Shelton's not making the postseason at two and seven. So yeah, and with the results, it looks like North Haven season's going to come to the end as well. It was it was going to be tough for them to sneak into the playoffs. They needed three teams above them to lose. And a direct snap to St. Pierre, who gets it to the 46-yard line. So a gain of four for him. And St. Pierre gets over the 80-yard mark today. New London currently leading 32-7 to and Law leading 3 nothing. So those were the two teams that needed to lose uh, with North ha uh, with East Haven alongside that too for North Haven to sneak into the Class M tournament, but again they are trailing here nineteen nothing with four and a half to go in the game. As a as Shelton continues to milk this clock, And the direct snap to St. Pierre, who breaks to the second level and crosses the first down marker. And Cole St. Pierre picks up another first down for the Gales. And that will pretty much wrap this game up. North, uh, you're going to see Shelton maybe just run the clock down all the way unless North Haven gets the ball back. Very impressive performance by this Gales team. I know they've been well-respected throughout the state of Connecticut for previous years, winning championships and being so competitive in the top 10. It's, but having a down year, coming into hostile territory, bad weather, Thanksgiving Day, and Shelton has done their job. Three and a half to go in this game. High snap and tackle behind the line of scrimmage there. Brian Moran, another tackle for a loss. He already has a sack and a half today and a couple tackles for a loss. As And has a catch in this game as well. So he's been one of the main guys for North Haven. A job well done to him. He's played a heck of a game today. Yeah, Brian Moran is on both sides of the ball, really been one of the few positives for North Haven today. And he's also a senior. So he he's is one senior. of the seniors that will be heading off into his bigger and better things for the future. But a... Uh-oh. What's going on up there? We got some weather up there. We got the wind. Something's going on. Got pandemonium up there. Under three minutes to go. 2-12 to go in the game. Uh, second and 12. Ball at the 42-yard line. And another direct snap. Breaks through. That's Cole St. Pierre again. And close... To the 40-yard line, or excuse me, yeah, 40-yard line, passing through to the 38-yard line. Game of about six for St. Pierre. How you feel? Good. Thanks, guys. Have a good Thanksgiving, right? 
third and one. Oh no. Third and four. Two minutes to go in the game. Clock continues to run. Under two minutes to go. Cole St. Pierre again. Plows through the 30-yard line, and it's a first down here for him. And that will be it. That's going to be it. North Haven just has to burn their timeouts. If they, cho if they choose to do so. And right now, Cole St. Pierre close to that 100-yard mark. 13 carries for 97 yards and a touchdown. Heck of a game from St. Pierre and, and really kind of put the dagger early in in the third quarter. You didn't think at the time, but that big, long touchdown run, the 42-yard touchdown run, really almost certainly put in the nail in the coffin right there for North Haven in this game. So definitely a tough, tough performance and definitely not the performance that Coach Sags and his coaching staff wanted to see coming on throwing seven. I know the conditions were going to be awful as they are currently still and going to be throughout the day, but definitely not the way that Coach Sags and his coaching staff or the seniors and the team as a whole wanted to end the season coming back from repeat back-to-back -back state championships and now having a down year, but a year that there are some bright spots. Artie McCormick, the freshman, he's not going anywhere. He's going to be a name, a force to be reckoned with moving into the future. Definitely some bright spots, but not the ideal to way to end the season, especially on Thanksgiving. So, a great job by the Shelton Gales today. A great performance. We'll see how North Haven bounces back next year. So, we'll take a quick break here. And when we come back, they'll announce the players of the game at midfield. So, again, 19 0. You're watching Thanksgiving football on NHTV. The Rotary Club of North Haven, where the business community comes together. For personal growth and leadership development, Rotary makes one a better community citizen. For more information, please visit nhrotary.org today. Arnold's Jewelers, the North Haven Diamond Center, 117 Washington Avenue in North Haven. Decades of experience and a deep commitment to the North Haven community. Visit us today at thearnoldsjewelers.net. So you see, you see the Gales sliding at Mike Vanacore Field here in celebration of their Thanksgiving win, shutting out the two-time state champion North Haven Nighthawks, 19 to nothing. Michael Valenti alongside Trevor Keys. This was not just the weather, but this game overall for North Haven was... And it, it, just a dominant performance yeah. by Shelton, my man. It was just a pretty much a dominant performance from the start. Literally, from the start, domination by the Gales today. Winning in all facets of the game, defensively, football, or offensively and special teams-wise. Yeah, and uh, total yardage, 202 for the Gales, 109 for the Nighthawks. Uh, just 94 yards rushing for a team that is just known for their running game. And, you know, Shelton... Outrunning them 162 yards to 94. Passing yards 50 to 12. Turnover game. They, uh, and they came into this game. I, well, you talked about the running. North Haven came into this game averaging 283 yards a game. So, yeah, and that take it for all, for, for all it's worth. Yeah, so the. Uh, they. Uh, yep, yeah, so. It, it's just a. So, I mean, this is what we're, unfortunately, a tough field yeah. to swallow for North Haven. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely, you feel for the seniors being this is going to be their last game as a North Haven Nighthawk and not the way they wanted to end their, their careers on Vanacore Field. But, hey, that's the game of football. Sometimes it just happens like that. You win some and you lose some. And today, there was a winner in the Shelton Gales. There was a loser in the North Haven Nighthawks. Yes. Unfortunate, Michael. But that's, you got to play the game. That's why yeah. they play the game. It is. And uh, Cole St. Pierre, the player of the game for Shelton today. Close to 100 yards today on 
13 carries with a touchdown, a 42 yard carry there. And unfortunately, not the note that North Haven wanted to end their season on. But Trevor, welcome back. Your first year Thanks, back buddy. after a few years gone. And it's been great. I mean, thank our production crew throughout the year. Of course. Our director, Doug Sisson, our camera operator, Vic Hogg, today. And also, hats off to our other people that aren't here today Henry Pond. Zach Boulier and Izzy Sisson as well that have helped made this broadcast on North best. Haven Television they are the great best. each and every week. Until next year, for Trevor Keyes and everyone here at NHTV, my name is Michael Valenti saying so long. Happy Thanksgiving Happy from Thanksgiving, Mike Vanacore Field.